God don't make mistakes. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he wouldn't have put you in a situation if you couldn't handle it. So now that it's happened, what you going to do? You going to be a man or are you going to sit there and fold up? Mm. It's no folding me. Like, like I proved in Cincinnati, there's no mm. such thing as, as pain. It's all about doing what you got to do to make it. Right. It's Stu Anima. Here, my co host, as always, he's the manager of Brand J. Thomas. What's good, Stu? How you doing? Doing good. How about you, man? I'm well, man. Well, as always. That's good. That's good. We have a special, special guest. The one and only former UC Bearcat basketball player, ex professional basketball player, and now an entrepreneur. Okay, doing chill. all kinds of things. Okay, Cashmore Wright is in the building. Okay, Clap it up. Now. No, we gotta clap it up for that intro that he just gave us. Come on now, all hey, love. I'm just trying to be like Sway, man. Hey, yeah, I'm just trying to do the Sway intro. <laughs> yes, sir. So, Savannah, Georgia, which I gotta go to. You know, it's cold outside. And uh, you went to Urban Christian Academy. You know, prior to UC, attended the NBA Top 100 basketball camp with the nation's best players, McDonald's All American nominee, averaged 32 points per game, seven mm. assists, three rebounds. So. Just coming from, you know, where you come from, playing AAU with Atlanta Celtics. I mean, I knew who you were. What even got you to Cincinnati? Why did you choose UC? You know, you could have went to a lot of places. So why did you pick UC? The craziest story would be the first recruiter that ever recruited me to saw me in the eighth grade coach at Furman University. And he ended up being assistant head coach at Cincinnati. So at first when I committed to Clemson, my sophomore year, and he took the job at Cincinnati. I kind of like open everything up because, you know, I'm more comfortable with this person and my family like him. So once that happened and I got actually to visit here and to see the people around and I actually got to be around the neighborhoods and just the fan base, everything was good. And I love being here. Hey, mm-hmm. speaking of Clemson, uh, you know, the OHIO stuff, that got die out, die down a little bit, you know. Uh, I'm a <laughs> UC fan, so y'all got whipped on. Bad. Did you see the? Oh, you're guy? talking about the yeah. football yeah, game. They, they got they got smacked. That's so a good thing, though. I, mean, I had to had to bring that up. Just I mean, it's, it's not. That's man. a good thing. Roll tight. Oh. But uh, moving on. Uh, career highlights. <laughs> you know, at UC. Uh, skills leader at UC. 198 steals. Oh, career total. Man. I mean, you played in 139 games. 2012 Global Sports Classic MVP. 2012 Big Big East Championship All Tournament. And you hold the C the season single. Steals record with 74 steals in 2011-2012. So, I mean, you know, having a legacy, you know, getting a chance to do what you did, how critical was that? How important is it for you to, like, have that legacy? To be honest with you, during the process, you don't even think about the legacy. It's just all about playing and and doing what's next for the next game. Mm -hmm. All that came after is when I looked up and I saw Mm -hmm. the statistics and the accolades that came with it. You know, all I could do was just sit there and be happy and be humbled at the same time to be in the same breath as some of the names that I'm going to mention alongside of the the Logans and the Van Exels and the Sean Kilpatrick's and the Lance. And I'm just, like I tell people all the time, I'm ecstatic just to be a part of that group. Mm-hmm. Mm. A group of elites. And, I'm telling you. You know, you were a big recruit, you know, coming out of high school, top 100 rated from rivals. I mean, I was just looking at it. Clay Thompson was just a little ahead of, you know, yeah. people that don't know that, class 2008. Um, and you you come in here with the big expectations, you know, which we all expected, and then boom, sideline, you know, what was it, ACL? ACL. ACL. So, you know, how is, how is that for you, you know, coming in and you expecting to play and then just in the blink of an eye you just get hurt? As a, Imagine as an 18-year-old you go to a, full, a, a new place, uh, so much expectations, you got the mm-hmm. home crowd behind you, you got your family. Right. And then for it all to be taken away, the last drill of practice, mm-hmm. your first year, it's just like, you know, it, it was just mind-blowing for me. I couldn't take it at that age. Right. But looking back at it, it was a blessing in disguise. Mm-hmm. It, it helped me, gave me extra year to grow up and learn actual basketball and learn how to be a man. Mm-hmm. And it just taught me so much. So I never, like, look back and say, I wish this wouldn't happen. Right. It happened for a good reason. And right. I appreciate it. And see, that's how it works. When I, my senior year of high school, oh, you know, man. I'm balling. Yeah. You know, I'm at practice. Now, wait, 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 wait. What you mean by balling? Yeah, he was loud. Hey, he come shoot. on now. He could Steph shoot. Curry. He put some oh. respect on his name. <laughs> Steph Curry. Yeah. The dark skinned Steph Curry. Oh. No, nah, but, uh, <laughs> nah, but uh, you know, I'm, you know, I'm hooping. I take a charge. Right. Didn't get back up. Broke my arm and dislocated my shoulder at the same time. Mm. Season ah. over. And I was like, you know, at the time, it's like, that's fake. 
You know, this ain't going to happen to nobody else. Why does it got to happen to me? Yep. I should have never took the charge. He should have took the charge. All these different things go to your mind. But then years later, you look back like, man, that really was a blessing in disguise. Mm-hmm. Like so much. I grew so much. I learned so much because of this one incident. I wouldn't be where I'm at right now, you know. So when you look back on a lot of things, that's what a lot of things in life, you know, when you go through something, when you're going through it at the time, it's hard to say, oh, okay, I'm going to gain something from this because you're still in pain, right. you know. But it's only years later when you can look back and say, wow, I, I actually see what that did to me. Exactly. You know. Right. And like 2013, you know, my best friend died cancer, 18. So I'm looking at the same perspective, like, mm-hmm. Why does this have to happen to me? I'm right. trying to turn up. I'm trying to go to college. Mm-hmm. He's supposed to go with me. Right. But now that I look at it, you know, I still wish he was here. You mm-hmm. know, it made me a better man. It just made me grow up, you know, right. quick. So, like you said, everything happens for a reason. And, you know, we talked a little bit before. Um, you played in the original Big East. Yeah, the original know, Not Big the East. fake Big East. Yeah. Because I don't hate though over here, he's a Xavier fan. No, 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 that, that's not the real biggest they playing in. That's yeah. the real big, well, the no. real that's, big, that's the, the real big East. East was around, they was playing in what was it, the 810? Yeah, yeah. So, anyway, the original Big East, I'm talking about you playing in Syracuse, Georgetown, Marquette, St. John's. Help me out, I forget. That. Uh, Connecticut, Connecticut, you got Louisville. Good. All Georgetown. I'm saying is that at the current nah, point in time, wait. Xavier is on top. No, nah, well, we're gonna see yeah. rank number what we're gonna see in 20 top, days. Top 10, nah, they 18th in the nation. You yeah, they're 20. dropping right now. Oh, they drop so anyway. Well, that's uh, <laughs> you see, we'll see them in 20 days, but you played in the original Big East. And I mean, yeah. how was that game after game? Mm-hmm. Like the competition. I mean, playing it. like I tell you all the time, I loved it. Mm-hmm. Like you knew from from day to day, from game to game, you couldn't take a day off. Mm-hmm. Like Providence could beat you, DePaul could beat you, South Florida could beat you, mm-hmm. and those were the, conceived to be the, the bottom three teams. Mm-hmm. So you had to fight every night. You playing Marquette and all those teams like that on the road, and you got to go to these NBA gyms, and you expected to win. Yeah. Like Coach Cronin don't we don't leave a airport or walk out there expecting to lose any games. Right. Or we know we have the squad to win, so that was the approach we took. Mm-hmm. Yeah, coach Cronin, he's a hard nosed coach, so I already know. He's a he, cool guy, man. Yeah, cool dude. Got a chance to meet him and he's just a good guy. So besides that, I mean, uh December I think 2012, you hit the game winner against Bama. Right. Road tie. Um, <laughs> you, you hit that shot. So. <laughs> Here you go. And, you know, what was that like, man? What were some of your favorite memories, some of the most memorable games, like, besides that one, stuff like that? Like, what were some of your top games that you would never forget? I mean, even though we lost, mm-hmm. right? I think the, the my favorite game was the, um, the Ohio State game. Hmm. Like, it, it was just like ah, the atmosphere in there playing against them and being in a Boston Garden. Like it was just unmeasurable. Like for me, I guess since that's the farthest I've ever been in the NCAA tournament. Like mm-hmm. it was just like one of them feelings where goosebumps. You was nervous before tip. Mm-hmm. Everything that would you do in childhood or in rec league went right back to it. Right. Nervous. Mm. It's like that kid came yeah, back, you know. But but you like that kid in you, though. It yeah. shows that you still had joy in the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because sometimes it can get, you know, commercialized right. or, like, you know, after a while it's like a game after game. Game after game. Yeah. It's just another game, yeah. you know. Because I, I remember AAU, man. That was probably the most fun I feel like that anybody really has. Yeah. Playing. That's how I met you. I yeah. missed them days. Yep. Yeah. You get a chance to meet so many people, get a chance to play, you know, competitively, just mm-hmm. get a chance to travel. Mm-hmm. If you don't play AAU, don't know what it is, I suggest you get into it mm-hmm. for the kids that's out there watching. But speaking of competition, I mean, you played – with Sean Kilpatrick, Lance Stevenson, I mean, current NBA player. So, you know, how do they help you grow on the court, off the court? And how exciting is that to see them, like, now flourishing, you know, professionally in the league? Well, those two come with two different stories. Like, when Lance came in, Lance came in, and you knew that he was leaving sooner or later. Hmm. You know, but one thing I did learn from him is there's no other person I've ever met that can come into a practice 5 and 6 o'clock in the morning and be – juiced up, ready to go, like going hard mm-hmm. as they can. And then after that, he's back to being Lance and joking, and you, mm-hmm. act, you act like nothing happened. He want to go to sleep. But while you're on that court, he's an animal. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, him and Sean was roommates. So in my opinion, Sean kind of like fed off that a little bit. And, and mm-hmm. you saw that Sean stopped going to the gym more. He saw it. 
working on his game. Then you just gradually saw him getting better. And all I could do is just like sit there and say, if that's what you want to do, he had no idea of going overseas. He said, I'm going to make it to the league. And that's what he did. So it's mm-hmm. just like me being that person with him for you for his five years and watching him grow. Mm-hmm. It's amazing to see. Yeah. Mm. Sean started a lifestyle brand undrafted. Shout out to Sean Kilpatrick. That's a nice brand, by the way. So for the ones, you know, that feel misunderstood or, you know, they were overlooked, you didn't get drafted, and you just got that chip on your shoulder, make sure you check that out. So we support you. And, um, you know, after that, you played overseas, man. So basketball has taken you global. Right. You got a chance to go to, where was that? Where did you play at? I played in Holland two years. I played in Poland. I played in Greece. First of all, what was the food like? And did you understand a word they were saying? Because I, I wouldn't have to come back. I mean, right. you, you'd be surprised to know. Like, where's Chick Fil A? Like, oh, there's know. no Chick Fil A now. Exactly. You so. get um, you get McDonald's, you get Burger King, uh, Domino's. I said. Does it taste the same? No, 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 no. no. There, there's no uh, like if you like the McDonald's breakfast, there's no like hot cakes, uh, None of that. sausage McMuffins, mm-hmm. nothing like that. So when you went there, like, were you caught your shot? I can only imagine. Like, you get there, you're in a whole other country. A whole other country. I mean, my first year, I was homesick. Like, uh, mm-hmm. I think, like. You're so far away. Yeah. And it was, like, my first time. At, I mean, I played for the USA team in mm-hmm. 2008. We okay. went to Germany. So, it was the first time I actually been out the country, and I was only for three weeks. Mm-hmm. So, the time I actually went overseas, and I was by myself, and it was just, like, homesick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I contemplated coming home, like, my first, like, after three months. I was just like ready to go home, but yeah. the parents I got and, they were, and my they girl, were. they was like, "Nah, nah, like, right. we ain't trying to hear that." Like you sign up for this amount of time, like th- that's how they raised me. Like you, mm-hmm. anything you start, you're gonna finish, right? Unless there's just like a major thing that have to, that, that makes yeah. it end, like what happened with me at the end. Other than that, you're gonna finish what you started, and then you go from there. Mm-hmm. Mm. So you said what happened at the end? Yeah, I mean, I told me ACL again. Again, oh, yeah. the same one or same one, oh, same, day. same day. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the same. Yeah, you did say so, it was the same the day. Same, same day. ACL on the same day, eight years later. Mm-hmm. Man. Well, I mean, like I tell people all the time, I say the first time I told me ACL eight years ago, I passed out, mm-hmm. and I didn't know what I was going to do in my life. Like right. basketball, I didn't know what was going to happen. Eight years later, I told me ACL, and I didn't even know. Mm. I finished the game. Like, I thought I was fine. I woke up swollen. Like, thought it was nothing. Went to right. the doctor. You tore your ACL. <laughs> Dang. Right. Like, and you, when you I were, know you was right no, there no, sitting but, there. You looked at him like, in Europe, like, what? Exactly. What? <laughs> no, no, no. But when you're in Europe, though, you got to think, like, in Europe, they, people have no filter. He had no compassion towards me about, like, just telling me. Straight up. It was just like, he showed me. He was like, you see this? He was pointing at it. He was like, there's no ACL. And I'm looking at him like, what? like there ain't no ACL. Y'all hey, need to you check y'all thing. Yeah. He was like, yeah, you it's t- ACL. He was like, yeah, you tore your ACL. He was like, you know, but it seems like you can still play and everything. I'm like, no, nah, man, right. come on now. Oh that man, was it. That was and so it. that was it. That was it. But you know, just like Will Smith said, he's a beast. He said, it's a lot of people see it as birth, life, death, and then that's it. But he said it's when really it's birth, life, death, rebirth. Yeah. You know, and so after every death is a rebirth, but so a lot of people are so caught into the death mm. they don't catch the rebirth. Right. And so with you, you know, the second ACL tear, that was a death, but then there was a rebirth. So right. tell us about what's that rebirth. What's next? The rebirth was you know, I uh co founded an organization called One Vision mm-hmm. and we basically trying to cultivate the young the youth into making them better on and off the court. We trying to do things a little different, like uh, monthly assessments and taking mm-hmm. them to um, foundations and doing all type of stuff. Like even this summer, me and my friends and my wife, we went uh, to Christmas and gave back to the um, the seniors. Mm-hmm. Like just just to do something and show our respect and just to give back. Right. Like it's not all about giving. I mean, getting. Like mm-hmm. you got to do something, get people back, and show that you know you're actually a part of the community right. and you actually do care. Right. And people respect that. And that's yeah. what I learned. And see, and that's 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 life changing right there. You know, a lot of people want to change the world, but they want to skip over their community to get yeah. there. No, nah, like I want to change the world, but you don't want to do nothing for your community. Right, like and that don't work. You know what I mean? That's why I feel like we go wrong a lot of times. You know, we we trying to do it big when really, each, if each person took care of their community, that that's that's how you change the world, in right. my opinion. Right, exactly. You know, so 
Kudos to you, man. That's, that's amazing. That. That's amazing. And then One Vision. Um, I like that name. Yeah. That's yeah, that's a lot. Where did the name come from? Um, to be honest with you, it came from like uh, my cousin mm-hmm. lived down south. He's a uh, a rap artist. Okay. And he started the whole One Vision thing, and it was called the One Vision Movement. Mm. And he told me, he said, you know, it's, it's for all our family. You know, everybody in our family should be a part of this One Vision because we all one family. And we should all work together and come up with a business and do stuff. So I took that, and I said, you know, I'm going to do my part. Mm. I'm an athletic. I'm a basketball player. I like kids. I like training. I like doing things like that. So let me do my part for this One Vision family and start it. Mm-hmm. So I started it. And now, like I told him, you know, it's, it's everybody's turn. You know, mm-hmm. I started the foundation. Hopefully, we, we want to do, like, uh, media. We want to do uh, management, marketing. Mm-hmm. We want to do it all. Like I told him, we we got a, a pedestal where we can actually brand ourselves and do what we want to do and make mm-hmm. our own. Right. And have our own business and family, and that's what we're doing. That's why I started One Vision, and the slogan is One Vision, One Family, the Academy. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm excited, man. I'm yeah. excited for the One Vision future and everything, mm-hmm. and you guys will be seeing more about it. And, uh, you know, we talked about a little bit of my nonprofit, uh, the Iowa Awareness Foundation, before. Mm-hmm. And we're working on the basketball clinic, so definitely would love to do some things together with definitely. you on that end. And mm-hmm. Today, got a chance to go to Children's Hospital. Uh, donate five thousand dollars dollars of pediatric brain cancer, and we were matched uh, five thousand back, so uh, total ten thousand for DIPG research. So, for those who don't know what that is, uh, Lauren Hill, uh, famous story. She had the disease, and mm-hmm. my best friend William Cox had the disease. So, very aggressive tumor. So, definitely want to you know check out the awareness of that. So, like you said, it's all about giving back. All right. And you know when you give uh, freely, it'll come back to you. You know, mm-hmm. I, I really do believe in that. So. Like we like we said, you know, Cashmere is more than a basketball player. That was an avenue, but now, you know, entrepreneur, trainer, husband. You know, you're married now, so taking those responsibilities as a young man, and you're doing well. So proud of you. So for the people that's a current student athlete, you know, in college, and you know, I hate to say it, but everybody's not going to the league, right? So, yeah. what would be your advice for people to be proactive and you know, just be like, all right, what? can I do after basketball? What can I do after football? What can I do after baseball? The main thing I would tell people is, is don't take school for granted. Mm. Like so many people get to college and think, you know, you're just an athlete and all you, all you can do is play basketball or play football or play sports. You got to realize that life revolves way more about way more than just sports. Right. Like once that ball stops dribbling and all the football stops, like, what are you going to do? Right. Like I know a lot of people that once that ends, their life ends, like, Mm. They don't know what else to do. Their whole life, they've been a, a athlete. So now it's like, what do I do? Right. You know, I was blessed to have a parent with both parents who are entrepreneurs. Mm. Like my mom owned her own business, and my dad was the one who funded that business. <laughs> so That's my life. whole life, I've, I've been. They've been teaching me. You know, at the end of the day, you can always do whatever you want to do. Mm. Like if if your mindset is you want to do this, give it a hundred percent, and if that don't work, you start over. Like, you never give up on yourself, and you never let people tell you can't do anything. You can do anything you put your mind to, as long as you're willing to sacrifice and put the work in it. Mm. Awesome. You know what was the, the the most interesting part? You said starting over. Right. I feel like a lot of people hang on to stuff because they they're afraid to start over. Mm-hmm. The truth. You know what I mean? Because starting over is hard, right. especially when you're already at a certain point. It's like, oh, I got to go back here. You know what I mean? I got to go back here. I think it's all about, like... People, people build perce- like perceptions of you. Mm. So if you've got this perception built about you like me, people built me as an athlete. You know, mm-hmm. you, you're a basketball player. Right. So to me, the hardest thing I had to do was actually break out of that. Mm. Like, how can I get myself to be Cashman Wright, not Cashman Wright, the basketball player? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I just mm-hmm. want to be myself and mm-hmm. let people actually see me as a person. And mm-hmm. then they can realize, okay, this is a genuine person, meaning good, trying to do well in the community. And be a successful individual. Like right. I don't chase like money and greed. My actual, I want to be great. I mm. tip it all the time. Like my, I'm chasing greatness, mm. and whatever comes with that, I'm willing to take. Whether mm. that's like heartaches or pain or whatever, but I know I'm chasing greatness. Mm. And if I just do things the right way and surround myself with the right team, like there's no way I can't get it because I'm willing to put the work in to get it. 
Mm. That's what it's all about. Welcome yeah. to Cash World. You know, <laughs> it always says it. You know, the world of cash. Not wish. So, you know, like you said, taking advantage of the education, especially when it's everything's paid for. Right. So, mm-hmm. with you, you graduated with uh, criminal justice, right? Right. Criminal justice, got your degree, took advantage of it. And, um, you know, first of all, where's your name come from? I want to know. Cashmere. Well, I've never heard that in my life. Oh, boy. Okay. He said, oh, so, boy. So, there's... My mom would tell you one story. My grandma would tell you another. <laughs> and, and, and I just came to the conclusion that, that they just made their name up. <laughs> because my mom said that she was watching some kind of uh, movie mm-hmm. before she uh, before she had me. And the name came. My grandma told me that she brought a cashmere sweater, like a baby <laughs> cashmere sweater. And that's where my mom got the name from. <sighs> So, so their stories didn't match up. Sto- nobody's stories <laughs> matching up. But, you know, but... The name's cool. Oh, yeah. The name is live. Hey, it's, see, that's that's funny, though, because uh, until, like, the ninth grade, I hated that name. Really? Hated they, it. The kids used to try to play you? Yeah, you know, that's a cash. It's a soft name now. Ooh, see, you know, I knew that's what it was, because kids, kids are vicious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> until you get older, you're like, you know, cash is a smooth name. You're like, right. when you're young, they're like, oh, cash me. Oh, he a sweater. Yeah. You know, they be trying to play you. <laughs> There's so many sweater jokes. Hey, dude. Man, they just, <laughs> like, 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 people people want to talk about you when... They don't got something. You know, yeah, that's you know, true too. Misery loves company. Right. Yeah. They, they might have wanted my name. Mm-hmm. That's they they, they might have been that's deep down. They probably like, oh, that's live. I'm telling you, that's yeah. what it was. Yeah, that's what See? it was. So, what are some fun facts? You know, some some hidden talents in, in the world of cash. You know, cash world. Um, I think the mo- the only the, one of the things that people don't know about me is like I'm good at basketball. I was good at basketball, but my eighth grade year, I got cut. Dang. Like. Made the team my seventh grade year, came back, tried out, and got cut. Like, that was by far the worst thing that could ever happen to me. And, like, mm. now that I look back, nobody will ever believe it. Because mm. my ninth grade year, I made it, like, a, like a mission to prove everybody wrong. And by 10th grade, I was the number one point guard in the state of Georgia. Mm. That's, so, a, that's within two years. Two years. Mm-hmm. And, and I tell people all the time when they tell me they can't do this and they can't do that, there's no way. Mm-hmm. I went to the gym every day from when my season ended, my eighth grade year, to my ninth grade year. Mm-hmm. Every day. And then I realized, you know, if you put the work in, it's just like, you know, like I say, my entrepreneurship. You put the work in, and you're going to get something back. Like, you're right. going to see results sooner or later. Right. But you just got to be willing to work. You got to be willing to be uncomfortable. And most yeah. people are not. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's true. A lot of people are not willing to do that. Mm-hmm. That's why when people think something is impossible, it's like for you because yeah. you ain't willing to work hard. Somebody gonna do Somebody it. Somebody gonna Somebody do it. Somebody gonna do it. Somebody gonna do it. And the only difference is what y'all do every single day. What you do every single day. Repetition. You know, it's just consistency, man. Like it's just like working out. I've been trying to get big for the longest, mm-hmm. but I don't get no consistency. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's just the difference. That's really just the difference, man. A lot of people are just not willing to take the pain, not willing to do what it what it takes. You know. So is that what it is? What? That's why you can't get strong. Now, for for I think what it is see, is my metabolism. Nah. <laughs> my metabolism, man. That's really what it is. It's scientific. I really do. I'm about to get you some protein. You man. said scientific. It's protein. scientific, it's man. Out. Metabolism. Uh, you got to get some protein. That's what it is. You got to get some shakes. Now nah, I got protein. What kind of protein you taking? Whey protein. <laughs> That's that's the protein they say you're supposed to take. Oh man, he trying to get grilled strong. <laughs> Silly. You got anything else too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, one thing I always like to ask people is just inter- it's interesting to me. You know, is um, what 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 keeps you like? What's that thing that keeps you going? Every single day. Like, for example, a lot of people quit because their why is not big enough. Right. Right. So what what keeps you waking up in the morning like, all right, I'm going I'm to go at it. I'm doing it again. I'm doing it again. I'm doing it again. What's your why? I'm chasing greatness. Mm. Like, I tell people all the time, I got a unique name for a unique person. Mm. Like, I'm not happy being, like, like normal. Like, right. I'm not happy being mediocre. I'm not happy being average. I want to mm. be great. Like, good is fine. But my daddy told me all the time, good is good. But great is better. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, you, a lot of good people out here, and good people get looked over. Mm. Great people, people stop and look at them and try to figure out and mimic what they do. And that's mm. what I'm chasing. Every day I wake up, that's all. That's, that's the first thing I look at my phone. That's my alert. Be great. Mm. 
So you okay? So good and great. Like it, I feel like there's like a thin line, like not a thin line, but it's like what's in that gap between um, good and great? Look, mm. look, like everybody don't get the same opportunities, and you know the, the older you get, the more you realize that that's true. Like some people don't get the opportunities that others get. Like. Not everybody's going to be LeBron James. Right. You know what I mean? That's true. It's going to be a lot of people that just fall through the cracks. And not because they weren't good, but maybe because LeBron James was in the other room, was in the other gym, and nobody's watching you in the, in the little gym. Yeah. So it's not that you're not good. You just didn't get the opportunity to actually show off your talents to the people that actually meant something or could offer you something. And, and that's what happens sometimes. So that's what I say. It's all about, like, building, like... You got to make sure you build around the right people so you get seen by the right lights and get seen by the right people if mm-hmm. this is what you're trying to do. Right. Because it's all about opportunities and taking your chances at the right time and being lucky sometimes. Mm-hmm. That's so true, man. Like some people don't just, they just don't get the chance. Mm-hmm. Right. Right place, right time. Man. Yeah. Right place, right time. And then capitalizing. Yeah. You get the opportunity. Right. You know? Yeah, that's true. Opportunity plus preparation. Success. Truth. <laughs> Facts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what? Though? I feel like I, I say this all the time. I, I really feel like some of the greatest opportunities we ever had, we don't even know we had. If that makes sense, I agree. I feel like we, like, as people, we miss so many opportunities that we don't even know we had in the first place. But that was your moment. You know what I mean? You don't even know it, but that was your moment, and you're gonna go on with your life now. Go on with your life, saying, "Dang, I'm waiting on my moment." And your moment already passed. Already passed you. Mm-hmm. So what yeah. you do? Well, well, you can be stuck. So what do you do though? You find something else. Yeah. Hey, I, you got to move on. Like I say, like move on. Like for me, I played basketball since I was like what five, and mm-hmm. now I'm twenty, turning twenty seven on Monday. Well, probably when they see this, mm-hmm. twenty seven already. Yeah. So that's what twenty some years I've did playing doing one thing, and then for me it was just over. Right. And then what was I supposed to do? Sit there and be like, you know, just that was my chance. I should have made the NBA. Or I should have did this. Right. And I should. No. It, mm-hmm. it, it's over. It happened. Mm-hmm. Now what's next? Mm-hmm. You can't be complacent and stuck in place and think that, you know, eventually something's going to happen. Right. My dad told me when it happened, he said, uh, it, ain't, it ain't time for you to sit there and feel sorry for yourself. Right. Like, it happened. Life happens. Mm-hmm. God don't make mistakes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he wouldn't have put you in a situation if you couldn't handle it. So now that it's happened, what you going to do? You gonna be a man, or are you gonna sit there and fold up? Mm-hmm. It's no folding, me. Like, like I proved that since now, there's no mm-hmm. such thing as, as pain. It's all about doing what you got to do to make it. Right. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So my last question, man, because that was amazing. At the end of the day, when it's all said and done, right? What do you want this? What do you want people to say? Cash mirror right was. An all-around great person. Like, he actually cared. He, mm-hmm. he wasn't just about himself. He wasn't so stuck on cashmere. Right. Or, or, as my family would call him, Akeem. He, he wasn't stuck on that person. Mm-hmm. He tried to better each person that he met, whether that was a kid or was a person. He, he lived life to the fullest. Mm-hmm. And so in that, in that dash between 1990, that dash, I want that dash to mean he did something that can live on for forever. Mm. So even when I pass or whatever, my kids still remember me because, hey, he did something to help me or help my kids' kids or even help the people in the city to remember me. And, and that's it. Like, because at the end of the day, when it's over, it's over. Right. And all you got is that dash. Mm. And that's the only thing I'm trying to I'm trying to make right. Mm-hmm. Mm. So what are you going to do with your dash? Mm-hmm. I'm going to make I'm gonna live every every day to the fullest. Like every day I'm going to chase greatness. And whatever comes that day, I'm going to live with it. That's, that's 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 a great point. Right. I think that's a question everybody got to ask themselves. Like, what am I going to do with my dash? Because yeah. we all going to have one. Everybody got a dash. Everybody, got, everybody a dash. got a dash. What you do with it is your choice. What are you going to do with your dash? Appreciate you, man. Amazing, man. Sure. Amazing. Clap it up, man. Catherine Wright in the building, man. In the building. You know I got my mm-hmm. my quote to end it. Good. And, um, <laughs> you know, the, the truth is, man, that... You know, most people, they never start because they never want to be seen at the bottom. Mm. Don't be most people. This is Jay Thomas. Stu Anima with the great Cashmere Wright. I'm telling you, we in here.